This one pixel gap will ruin your builds. And here's why your terraforming never looks realistic. And these are 31 Minecraft building sins. But first, we got a bonus sin. Apparently, no one's ever subscribed to the channel using their left elbow. So to fix that, pull your funny bone to that red button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. This one pixel can completely ruin your builds because as soon as we convert our grass blocks into a path block, then it goes from 16 pixels tall down to 15. And with that one pixel gap of visibility, now we have to consider any blocks that are seen behind. So in this case, the proper way that we should be doing this is replacing the block that's underneath with the same block that's above it. Otherwise, our build's just gonna look unfinished. And since we went through extra effort to make sure that we even had the path in the first place, I think it's worth following through so that the rest of the build doesn't look unfinished. This table has one crucial flaw. And you'll notice that as soon as we start to try and set down the plates. See, when you decide to build a table using something like a bottom slab block or a bottom trap door, then we've just set ourselves up for disaster, considering that we can't place item frames or other blocks for decoration. And if you ask me, a dinner table that doesn't let you eat dinner, that's a pretty rough call. I think you'll find it's better to just build your blocks on the top part of the slab. From the front, this signpost looks fine, but once we move over to the side, then the physics start to get a bit wonky. Unfortunately, the game's coded in such a way where item frames and signs will float a little bit off of certain blocks. Those being fences, glass panes, and even chests if you look from the right angle. So if you ask me, it's worth building around this fact and considering ways that you can place these items so that there isn't an annoying gap that breaks the illusion. Or at the very least, just make sure that no one can walk over to the sides to see your problem. This path looks great, but none of my friends want to walk on it. Because when you use pressure plates as the decorations on a path, all anyone's going to remember is the clicking noise every time that they walk over it. And frankly, the only reason I could think to do one of these is so that you could sneak a trap into your path. Other than that, it's just gonna put everyone on edge, and that's not exactly what I think of when I'm talking about a leisurely stroll. When you place a log facing the wrong way, it's usually easy to tell that you messed up. But when you're using the six-sided wood block, then it's a little bit more difficult. Because with this case, the texture matches on one face, but it doesn't on the other. And that's why when we look close at this building, it starts to look off, considering that some of the wooden blocks that we placed have the wrong orientation. So the next time that you're building out your log cabin, keep in mind that it's not just about the amount of wood that you have, but how you use it. This floor is a complete waste of time, and that'd be because I foolishly decided to make it out of double slabs instead of just a single one, which is not only going to be more expensive, but it's also going to take longer to mine. Even with an efficiency 5 pickaxe and a haste 2 beacon, you would figure that the stone should be instant mineable, but since we made this out of double slabs, it's not. Which is great if you're making a prank, but when you're building something like this for your actual house, it's a real nightmare. And it goes to show that you should never use a double slab where a full block does the same job. Bone meal and saplings pair together great, but not when you're decorating trees. Since, as you'll notice from the small forest by my house, having a bunch of bone milled saplings makes for a really samey looking build. And instead, you'd be much better off by chopping down those trees and using the materials to build up some custom ones of your own. That way, you can have much more variety and you'll get a set of trees that's worthy of being placed next to your beautiful house. There's technically nothing wrong with this store, but when we zoom out, I'm sure you can see the problem. Because while asymmetry can be great for a build in many cases, it's when you start to have something like a two block doorway that's built into an odd numbered wall that definitely definitely feels like a sin. But as long as you remember to count, this is an easy one to fix, so I'm not all that worried about it. On the second floor, we've got a beautiful hot tub, but on the ground floor, you're not gonna like it as much. Since the ugly truth is that only having a one block thick floor underneath a water or lava feature means that all we're gonna see from the bottom floor is a bunch of particles dripping down from the ceiling. I'd rather just make the floor too thick and not have to worry about it. Cave vines and glow berries make for a beautiful decoration to put in your build. But as we can see from this tree on the left, it would look a lot nicer if we actually trimmed them. So if you're going through the effort of using cave vines and nether vines in your base, you'll want to also remember to pack a pair of shears to do the job right. And by clipping the ends of these, we'll make sure that our decorations never get out of hand. And hey, you can even do the same with regular vines if you add in string to keep the bottom trimmed as well. That way your ivy league stays up in the top percentile. This house might look nice, but it's got a dirty secret. It's dirt. Dirt's the secret. And while it can be easy to fill in some of the gaps with a cheap block like dirt, all it takes is someone looking at the right angle to know that this house is built off of something pretty cheap. And and that especially won't do you any favors if a creeper were to explode. So for that matter, Minecraft doesn't need insulation, I'd recommend against having this. Do not go near this house. Because it might look fine, but as soon as you try to hit a block in survival, then you'll see the whole problem. And the issue is, is that when you're playing creative mode, it can be easy to just grab the first block that you see. But considering that infested blocks show up the same way as regular stone blocks do in the creative menu, you really want to make sure that you don't build out a silverfish when you're trying to make a beautiful base. And to avoid this, I'd recommend using something like vanilla tweaks, which adds a yellow border around them when it's in the menu, but then when you place it down, you're not gonna see that, giving you the best of both worlds. Do not walk underneath these rafters, because as great as they look, as soon as you step underneath to go and appreciate them, that's when a creeper can jump down and explode you with a short 
fuse. Though, this would be a simple problem to fix, since all we need to do is just light up our rafters. Which is to say that it's important to light up every part of your build, not just the ground level. Using blocks like stairs in your paths can be a great tool to use, but when you start to mix in bottom slabs as well, that's where the issue starts to arise. Since anyone that's trying to walk over these is just going to be stopped by this annoying slump that happens in your block. So even though you're able to walk up this seamlessly, it's still not the greatest feeling to have to bob up and down while you're going over your path. So to help those weary travelers feel a little bit more steady, it's better to get the same kind of depth by using cobblestone stairs instead of a cobblestone slab. Beehives and bee nests make for great decoration blocks, but it's the bees inside that you gotta be careful of. So if you foolishly decided to grab one of these with a soak touch pick before making sure that you evicted the current tenants, now you're just gonna have a couple of buzzing blocks inside of your build. And that might just be the telltale heart that'll finally drive you crazy. By using the same material for your walls, floor, and ceiling, it's tough to see the separation between the different parts of your build. And instead, you'll want to consider from the outset what's going to be your foundation, what's going to be your walls, and what's going to be your roof. Since that allows you to break up your build and add a lot more variety to what would have just been a really monotone looking base. Copper is a great block to build your roof with, at least it is for right now. But the only issue is that over time, since we didn't wax this copper, we're going to lose that orange color that worked so well with our build in the first place. Now we do have the benefit of copper oxidizing really slowly when it's packed together like this, but slowly doesn't mean it's never going to happen. So if you're already going through the effort to mine up all the copper to do this, I'd recommend just getting another bee farm as well and preserving your build in the state you want to keep it at. Why does this lava look so ugly? Well, the unfortunate problem here is that we didn't use lava source blocks for all of them. And as you can notice, cutting corners here is just going to make for a mess, which really is true whether you're using water or lava features, but at least water tends to fill in the gaps if you leave it for long enough. But since lava is renewable through dripstone now, I think there's no reason to leave any of your lava pools looking this bad. So if you're going to do a job, you got to do it right. You should never leave blocks missing in a place of a build where you won't see them. Because even if you can't see it, you're still going to know it's there. And you're definitely going to hear it when those mobs start spawning in the gaps that you left. So to prevent that, it's worth filling in the gaps with something that you have on hand. Even if it's a cheaper block, that's at least going to be better than having negative space in the open air. And that piece of advice doesn't just go for the regular builds that you're leaving on hand. Because for the same reasons, you never want to leave your terraform terrain hollow as well. Because while this custom hill that you built might look great, it's going to be a real shame when a couple of mobs start to spawn into that dark space. And even if you were to light it up, all it takes is breaking one block and you'll fall right through the middle of that open air. So instead, if you're going through the effort to make your hill look realistic, why not actually make it realistic and fill it all the way in? This is why your terraformed hill never looks natural. Because while we're mostly focusing on making the actual shape of the hill look realistic, it can be easy to forget that after you're done, you have to go back and add back in the foliage. Just having simple things like one and two block tall grass can make a huge difference. And then with a couple of flowers sprinkled around for some splashes of color, your new terraform terrain will look a lot more natural, and it'll start to blend in better with its surroundings. So if you've got the bone meal on hand, there's really no reason not to try this. Item frames are great, but you should be cautious, because when you're decorating with these, it gets very easy to have too many, and then it starts to bog down your performance. I mean, keep in mind, these are counted as entities within the code. So every item frame that you're placing down to the game, that's basically as if you're placing down a whole bunch of new mobs. And considering how small these are, that's an easy fact to forget. I mean, this small eating area uses 16 item frames alone. So picture how many item frames you're using to line your whole storage system. You get the point. And honestly, I take that as a reason to use these as sparingly as possible. But that might just mean that whenever you do choose to use them, it'll be even more special. This build might be safe, but it sure isn't pretty. Let's be honest, lighting up your build with torches on the floor is just too basic. And considering that you can get that same amount of function if you just place the torches integrated onto the walls, I don't see any point of ever placing these down on the floor. And at least for me, I'd rather not have my house look like a cave that I'm lighting up. And you don't even have to go through the effort of putting lanterns on your wall or something fancy like that. Just moving your torches up to a different part of the house will already be enough to do the trick. And you can do it all at no extra cost to you. It doesn't matter how nice your build is, if it has a two block tall ceiling, no one's gonna want to come inside. Let's face it, two block tall ceilings are just annoying to get around. And without the ability to easily sprint jump between different places of the build, it's really gonna feel claustrophobic for anyone who comes inside. So if you ask me, three blocks tall should be at least the minimum. That way, you'll have more room for everything you want to do, which is quite literally going to be less of a pain in the head. You should have windows in your house, but not like this. Since by tucking in glass panes to the corner of your house, all of a sudden the whole foundation looks off. I mean, you wouldn't exactly want all of the weight of your roof being burdened onto a couple of glass panes, so it only takes one look at this to tell that it's just off. And if you want to do the job right, I'd highly recommend just moving those glass windows a couple of blocks to the left or right on any wall, and that'll make it look more realistic and give you a couple of blocks to frame them as well, which isn't a bad touch. Here we've set up a beautiful table, and we've even got a couple of plates on top for 
food. But that's all gonna become an issue as soon as someone, or something, steps on top. Since if we make the mistake to accidentally place buttons or pressure plates next to our trap doors, then all it'll take is another player or entity to press that button, and the whole illusion's gonna break. So, while each of these can make for great decoration blocks by themselves, it's when you start to mix them together that you become more of a mumbo jumbo instead of a green. Here's my big issue with modern staircases. Because as great as the design is, the issue comes up when you start to actually try to climb it. And with these stairs, you have to jump up every single step to do it. Instead of using, I don't know, stairs, which just let you seamlessly sprint and walk up them. And really, I'm not trying to turn on auto jump just so I can climb up to my second floor. And honestly, it more so feels like this modern solution just created a couple of modern problems. I'd rather stick to the old fashioned way. This redstone works, but there's still a problem with it. And as you'll see, that's because we can, well, see it. In a lot of ways, having visible redstone is a recipe for disaster. Since not only does this make all your circuitry vulnerable, but I'd also venture that whatever circuitry you got going on here does not blend well with the aesthetic you got around it. So instead, we should treat this like a maintenance closet and tuck all of our important cabling behind closed doors. Besides, if you're building a redstone casino, you're not gonna want any of your customers knowing exactly how much you're ripping them off. Now, there's nothing wrong with this building, but rather what it's built on, or lack thereof, because when you start to zoom back, you'll notice that part of the building is hanging off the edge of the terrain. And this just looks really amateurish. I mean, there's a reason why even Tony Stark's mansion had these giant supports keeping it to the Malibu coast. Even if gravity doesn't exist in Minecraft, you at least gotta make it look like it does. And by either adding in supports or just expanding the terrain to cover underneath your build, that'll make the whole thing look way more realistic. This is a building sin that even Green's guilty of. Since while it's easy to get excited about building up the beautiful front of your building, since after all, that's what most people are gonna see, it's when you neglect the back of the build and leave it unfinished that you start to get into a problem. Now I get it, in survival mode it's easy to run out of materials to finish the job, but if you ask me, if you're only gonna do half of the job anyway, then you should shrink down the scope of the build to half the size and do the whole thing. It's a lot more impressive to have a full job. Everyone's built this house in creative mode, but there's a reason we only do this once. Since as fun as it is to build one of these and feel like you're rich when you're starting out, when you actually try to live in one of these value block houses, that expensive taste is gonna feel cheap. So while there is a lot of great builds that you can do by using these blocks sparingly, it's when you build a house like this that you're gonna come up against a lot more issues. Not the least of which is the IRS. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.